No distance at all. God is right here in my heart. God is right here in my heart. God is right here in my heart. I'm raising the veil between me and my God. No separation. No distance at all. God is right here in my heart. God is right here in my heart. God is right here in my heart. I'm raising the veil. God is right here in my heart. God is right here in my heart. God is right here in my heart. I'm raising the veil. I want to know you. Oh God, I'm raising the veil. I want to see you. I want to hear you, oh God, I'm raising the veil, I want to feel you, oh God, I'm raising the veil, I want to praise you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so, so much. That's one of my favorite Daniel Neymar's songs, Raising the Veil. <clears throat> we do put veils and walls and all kinds of things <laughs> between me and my God, between you and your God. And right this moment, we've lifted the veil. So I'd want to welcome you all, like Julie said, from here, there, and everywhere. Um, Zoom, Facebook Live, and live here in our beautiful sanctuary. Feels so good. And to know all of you were there. Just beautiful. Our energy is, there's no veil between us, right? So um, those of you who are new out there in video land or here in a sanctuary, you know that Unity of Bay City is a powerful spiritual path to a powerful powerful path to spiritual living and we celebrate that together every sunday every sunday so right now i'm going to do what to start us how we always start things in unity and that is with prayer Take a nice deep breath as we center ourselves, as we lift the veil and we feel the spirit of love of God within us now, moving in and through us as us. 
And as we pray this morning, with so many, so many world issues, so many things and energies moving in this world, our prayer this morning is for us as individuals to know the peace that passes all understanding, to affirm the good in this world, that the good rises up in our hearts and out into our world. No matter what the issue, what's the first thing that popped into your heart and your mind? As I said, prayer. We pray with that right now, with all of the things that are happening. We lift the veil and we feel that love, that guidance, our inner wisdom. We quicken all of the powers that are within us as God moves in and through us as us right here and right now. We're very, very grateful for this understanding of how this world works on an individual basis and collective basis. So we're grateful for all the movement of energy in this room and in this world. And so it is. Amen and amen. And before we go to our vision, I have a little announcement. It's birthday Sunday. <laughs> it's the first Sunday of October, which is just, I just can't even believe it's October. I'm like, what happened to September? So I know we have at least one birthday in the room. Jerry's birthday today. I'm going to call her out. Everybody, happy birthday. <clears throat> and I know Carrie is watching, and her birthday's coming up in October. Who else? Anybody want to um, admit that it's your birthday in October? Uh, Jack and Esther. Those are the only hands I see. <laughs> awesome. Well, we celebrate with you all month long, and that's what I like. My birthday month is usually a couple of weeks long at least. <laughs> so we wish you a happy birthday. And we say, God danced the day you were born. The angels did the bump to Gabriel's horn. Oh, baby, God danced the day you were born. So grateful for the gift of you and you and you and you and you. Happy birthday. And I'm sorry, we usually have a big old luscious cake for the month of birthdays next year. And you get to go out and get your big old sheet cake and have it for yourself. <laughs> All right. So let's go to our, our vision statement. And again, as we lift the veil and we allow spirit to move together, we say united in spirit grounded in the divine we are a beacon of light for the world nice deep breath as we go to our mission statement we are one community looking within reaching out and practicing the principles of love so it is thank you and now our lovely um, platform assistant Bard Maxwell will uh, lead us, um, tell us about our annual theme and lead us in the daily work. Thank you, Barb. Good morning. My name is Barb Maxwell and it's my privilege to be with you today and to provide support on the platform. Reverend Gail was talking about lifting the veil and right now it's fall and we have the most magnificent veil coming with all these beautiful leaves. But it won't be long before that beautiful veil will be lifted. And it's just like life. Sometimes things can appear bare, but that's when you can see the most clearly. This year's theme at Unity of Bay City is 20,000 Ways of Kindness. Let us know the ways in which you practiced or witnessed kindness. In a world where you can be anything, be kind. 
our daily word for today is fearless. Our affirmation is, I am fearless as I live authentically. Will you repeat our affirmation with me together? I am fearless as I live authentically. In the past, I may have hidden my inner light, afraid to be myself. I may have tried to please others by conforming to someone else's idea of who I should be. I may have shrunk from an aspiration, fearing that I would fail in pursuit of my goal. I may have doubted the divine perfection at the core of my spiritual self. Identifying with my perceived flaws and feeling small and inadequate. Today I make a new choice. I choose to live fearlessly, drawing upon my faith to believe in myself, my imagination to envision my best life, and my understanding to know my divinity. Bold and brave, I am fearless as I live my life authentically, pursuing my dreams and expressing my divine nature. From Deuteronomy 31st chapter, 6th verse. Be strong and bold. Have no fear or dread, because it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. And again, our affirmation together. I am fearless as I live authentically. Amen. And Barb, I'd say that describes you pretty well. <laughs> fearless. How about all of you? Are we fearless? We are at times. And we are scared as a little mouse in a corner at times. And that's what we get to embrace all of who we are, all of who we are. And right now we're gonna move into a meditation. And this might sound familiar to you. Um, it is our mastermind prayer that we'll be using during fall faith. And so we're I'm gonna move through this and then talk about it a little bit here this morning and a few other juicy tidbits of <laughs> So right now, it's just time to settle in into your seats. And if it's comfortable, put your feet on the floor, if that works for you. And if it's comfortable, close your eyes. Just allow them to close. Take a nice deep breath. And then just allow your breath to breathe you. grounded on this Mother Earth with so much gratitude. We lift the veil as we move into the silence, into the gap between the thoughts as often as we can. Breathing in and breathing out. As you hear these words, allow them just to wash over you. You'll have thoughts about them and just acknowledge your thoughts and allow the words to continue as we begin. I commit. I now make the commitment to place my life completely under the direction of the Christ within. I dedicate myself to be of maximum service to God and my fellow humanity and to remain an open channel of God's will. Breathing. I accept. I now accept that my personality is powerless 
to transform my life. It is the Christ within me that does all the perfect work. Lifting the veil, breathing. I believe, I believe in one presence and one power active in the universe. This power is perfect life, love, intelligence, and wholeness expressing through me now. With God, all things are possible. Breathe that in and breathe through your heart space. I forgive and I understand. I understand that erroneous self-defeating fears are the cause of my problems and unhappiness. I now forgive all others and myself for any real or imagined mistakes I am willing to be changed at depth. I am willing to be changed at depth. Breathing in and breathing out. I ask believing in the awareness of the Christ presence. I ask believing that my heart's desire is fulfilled now take a moment right now what is your heart's desire just a few words my heart's desire Feel the feeling of your heart's desire as we declare and affirm that your heart's desire is now made manifest. Imagine that. Feel that. Know that as the truth. It is made manifest right now. I give thanks. I give thanks as I joyously and expectantly assume the very feelings now as I will have when my heart's desire is made manifest. And now as I breathe, I let go just as I let go of the breath every time I breathe in, I breathe out. I let go and let God express through me in perfect ways. And I bless my spiritual community. I bless Unity of Bay City, our mastermind prayer circles, our fall faith circles, and everyone in this community and outside, because there's never an outside. We're all connected in this spiritual community, named and unnamed, known and unknown. Together we celebrate life. Together we celebrate life itself in all of its many forms. And so we let go now as we take these words into the silence for another moment, allow them to wash over you peacefully, fully.
And now a nice, deep and cleansing breath, feeling the energy of Mother Earth as we sit, no matter where we're sitting, that Earth is holding us all up, moving through us. All the energy of love in this world, the highest thoughts and our deepest faith move through us now. And we say, Amen and Amen. And now Stacy is going to sing our special music. God is my source. For everyone uh, joining us virtually, make sure you sing along with me for those in the sanctuary. Unfortunately, you're not able to sing along, but please feel free to stand up and dance around and feel the music, if you will. God is my source. God is my power. God gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings. God gives me everything I need. Love is my source. Love is my power. Love gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings. Love gives me everything I need. Joy is my source. Joy is my power. Joy gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings. Joy gives me everything I need. Peace is my source. Peace is my power. Peace gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings. Peace gives me everything I need. God is my source. God is my power. God gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings. God gives me everything I need. God gives me everything I need. God gives me everything I need. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you, thank you. God does give us everything we need, even when we can't recognize it. The theme for um, this fall faith is based on the book Living Originally by Robert Brummett. He was one of my teachers in, in seminary and a, a friend. Um, a wise man and it's a great book whether you sign up for a fall faith circle or not i recommend the book very much but this morning because we're not starting until next week and i know we changed the date it's going to be starting on thursday february oh my gosh <laughs> where'd that come from that's how fast it's going on thursdays starting on the 15th of October so you still have time to sign up everybody can still sign up we've got um, and I'll announce that in a little while um, who our facilitators are and all that so stay tuned stay tuned happy fall so we need to start with a little pumpkin humor Marie this one's this are these are for you Marie if you're still on there what do you get if you divide the circumference of a pumpkin by its diameter, pumpkin pie. Marie, are you proud of me? How did the jack-o'-lantern quit smoking? He used the pumpkin patch. <laughs> it gets worse. Here's another one. What was, why was Cinderella bad at football? Because she had a pumpkin for a coach. 
Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> All right, now that we've recovered from that little bit of pumpkin humor, little bit, <laughs> I've got three topics to share with you this morning. Politics, spirituality, and the mastermind prayer. And we just had a little preview of the mastermind prayer. So let's start. Politics, I'm going to talk about that because, well, it's kind of a big topic right now. We're 30 days away from a presidential election. Spirituality, our spiritual understanding and prayers, will help us cope with the current and ongoing political scene and everything else in our life. And the Mastermind Prayer supports our six-week book study during our fall faith and politics and spirituality. It all kind of ties in very, very nicely. So we'll start with politics. All right, three here. In 30 days from today, we will have the privilege to vote for the next president of these United States, as well as state and local candidates. And I'm going to boldly, boldly go where no minister is supposed to go and tell you how to vote. Don't leave, don't turn on, don't mute me yet. I didn't say who to vote for. I said how to vote. And by that I mean how to prepare yourself to vote. First step, turn off the news. Second step, turn within. And I give that advice to people all throughout the year, whether it's politics, time, heightened, whether it's um, Christmas, turn off the news and turn within. It's a, to prepare to vote as a conscious and caring citizen of the United States of America. We must tune out the news and tune into our own wisdom and spiritual understanding of what is happening in this world today. We cannot look at it through the eyes of the media. It's tainted in every possible way. We're wiser and smarter than that. We are. I know we are. So take a deep breath. I know the news is something very, very critical for many but I haven't watched it in years. And guess what? I never miss anything that needs to come into my awareness and to my consciousness. I don't watch television commercials either. Commercialism has got us by the throat, by the pocketbook. All right, so that's my stand on that. And it moves into our heart's desire. And so I wrote this mastermind prayer um, for my heart's desire about this election year. In this election year, 2020, we respectfully cast our vote, first in prayer and then at the polls. We vote with a clear vision of a world that works for everyone. We hold that vision with clarity and faith, affirming that the highest good for our nation and our world is unfolding now. We call for love to prevail. Amen and amen. So that, dear ones, is my deepest heart desire. And I hope it's yours as well. Now, more about the mastermind prayer. That's the one we use in the fall faith circles, like I said, and we start it next week. The mastermind prayer was developed by Reverend Jack Boland, a unity minister most remembered for his leadership in Renaissance Unity, which is quite a well-known unity church. And of course it's in Michigan, in Warren, Michigan, um, just like our uh, Unity um, Urban Institute is in Detroit, Michigan. So this prayer, it's a blend of, of principles, unity principles in Jack's many years and success with 12-step programs used in many recovery groups. 
the purpose of the mastermind prayer, he says, is to get four to 10 like-minded, positive, proactive people together who want to make a difference in their lives and, the, and others through the power of prayer. And even if you're not feeling especially positive or proactive at the moment, give it a go. The mastermind prayer is not designed to fix each other's problems, but turn our problems, problem areas for our desire for good to the universal spirit. And that is what prayer is always about, isn't it? Turning it over, letting it go. The format makes it easy for everyone to participate in a safe and supportive space. And one of the beauties of the mastermind prayer is that you get to add your own heart's desire with the powerful intentions of the circle, affirming that with you and for you. It's a prayer that I used in meditation today. Many of you are familiar with it, having done Fall Faith before, or maybe Mastermind in a 4T program. Um, and normally, as you probably heard me say before, I'm not a real big fan of rote prayers. I can't, I can't move with them in the same way. And so my first encounter um, with this mastermind prayer didn't feel so good to me. But there are so many times when a scripted prayer is helpful and very appropriate. And praying together as a group is one of those times when this type of prayer is really effective. And there are parts of this prayer when I was initially introduced to it that I struggled with. I truly struggled with it. I'd been in religious science for a few years and then I started um, my, my path in unity and I took the four T's um, uh, prosperity class and there's the one we used in that. It's the time, talent, treasures, and um, tithing um, coursework. And so, eight of the steps and there's eight steps in this prayer there are three that i want to talk about that kind of knocked me off my my little i think i know spiritual stuff pretty good so when i heard these words i commit i now commit make the commitment to place my life completely under the direction of the christ within i dedicate myself to be of maximum service to god and my fellow humanity and to remain an open channel of god's will well, yeah, I mean, I, I got called to ministry when I was 22 or something, and deeply when I was 17. So, yeah, I, I dedicate myself to be of maximum service to God, but what's this whole place my life completely under the direction of the Christ within? I don't know. That just didn't resonate with me. And then number two says, I now accept that my personality is powerless to transform my life. It is the Christ within that does the perfect work. When I read that today, I'm like, okay, I get it. But when I heard that then, I was like, wait a minute. If I'm powerless, then where's my choice? Where's my all of these things that we're told we have free will, free choice, right? So then the fourth one, skipping number three, I forgive and understand. I understand that erroneous self-defeating fears are the cause of my problems and unhappiness. I now forgive all others and myself for any real or imagined mistakes I'm willing to be changed. Mistakes, period. I am willing to be changed at death. <gasps> Can we add the word gently in there, please? <laughs> So those are very bold, bold statements, aren't they? And I don't know, you may be very familiar with them and have come, but I had to spend some time during that class and afterwards to really, to really see if that was how I could resonate with my God. So I was like, okay, well, what happened to affirming my good? When did I, what about the surrender stuff? And when did we start blaming ourselves for everything, right? I hold myself, my erroneous thoughts, and well, I, I didn't know they were erroneous thoughts at the time. So I had, to, I had to wrestle the angel with these. I don't hold back my questions. 
about stuff in any class teachers probably really could put tape over my mouth but what about well i don't quite what one time in bible class in seminary um wonderful instructor um, um ej niles um, who does spiral dynamics of the bible we were in class and she said something very profound but i had i missed it and i don't know if she asked me or she asked somebody and i said i'm sorry i wasn't paying attention i wasn't i was still back here you know? so it kind of tells you how i am in class and change me at depth that was scary there's another prayer that talks about changing you at depth and my mentor uh reverend lisa davis said she goes when she was in ministerial school they said they changed it to gently <laughs> change me gently at death let's go baby steps okay so we are spiritual beings having a human experience gosh we've heard that a lot haven't we hmm and it's true so we wrestle with the uplifting energy of our highest thoughts and we wrestle with the oppressive energy of our deepest fears and we're sometimes just caught right in the middle like, yeah, yeah angel devil so for me to commit my life placing my life completely under the direction of something that i didn't quite understand yet it was tough for me it was too nebulous but then i asked myself isn't that the point gail to let go and let god isn't life easier when i turn it over to god it always is sure but it took me a little while to get there and am i there a hundred percent now surely not i'm still i'm still here being being human well the good news is that i found that with practice lots of prayer meditation letting go talking to my mentors talking to a counselor i went to one counselor and said i don't think i believe this stuff and i'm like i'm in seminary for god's sakes <laughs> there's just so much to life but with practice i can more readily now that i'm the ripe old age of 65 Oops, I'm 64. Oh, for goodness sakes. <laughs> and you know the Beatles song, 64. I can more readily recognize the areas of my resistance. And I can see what I'm doing. I'm not just always ready and willing to completely let it go, but I continue to explore, to ask, to listen, and to act. As I matured spiritually, I have embraced the mastermind prayer. I do have absolute faith in the perfect order of God energy, even when I don't like it. Because I have to go within and say, is this, is this mine? Make my way clear. Show me, tell me something. I have proven spiritual principles in my life over and over and over again. And I know that my human experiences are made whole when I allow my human and spiritual self to work as one. And I made up a new word. It wasn't in the dictionary anyway. I call it humanality. We talk about spirituality, personality. This is my humanality. So then, each time my ego trips me up, I get to grow again. Because I walk with humanality, talk with humanality, think with humanality, smile with humanality, pray with humanality, feel with humanality, love with humanality. And I've got a great big heart. Anybody recognize that song? <laughs> Probably not since I sang it. I just had a lot of fun with that. I, and that song is from the early 50s before, I mean, I think I was about two or three years old. And it just 
stuck with me. And so I've been, it's my little jingle right now. So remember that we do walk and talk and pray and live with our humanality. That is our spirituality and our humanness. Now, Portia Nelson describes her humanality in her poem, um, Autobiography in Five Short Chapters. And I, and you may have heard this one, and it bears repeating. She is quite, she was quite the woman, and um, I didn't even know it was a book. And it takes, the, it takes you through the chapters, but this is the most important part. Autobiography in five short chapters. Chapter one, I walk down the street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I fall in. I'm lost. I'm helpless. It's not my fault. It takes forever to find a way out. And in chapter two, I walk down that same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I pretend I don't see it. I fall in again. I can't believe I'm in the same place. But it isn't my fault. It takes a long time to get out. Now, chapter three, I walk down that same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I see it's there. I still fall in. It's a habit. But my eyes are open. I know where I am. My eyes are open. I know where I am. It is my fault. I get out immediately. Chapter four, I walk down the same street and there's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I walk around it. And then finally, in chapter five, I walk down another street, make a new choice. Now, we have to keep in mind that there's always other streets with holes. So we get to keep our awareness up. I've, I've been referring to that story for probably 35 years because it's timeless, isn't it? We can all identify with it. So when you're in fear or resistance or over the moon happy, you're in good company. You think and feel with humanality. We can then interpret every question, everything in our life, in our own unique and innate, with our own innate wisdom, with our own unique self, even step one, two, and four of this wildly successful mastermind prayer that I have now come to embrace. The true power of the Christ within each of us moves us forward when we can let go and allow God energy to move in and through us. When we lift the veil, we must practice, it, practice opening our inner eyes to see the light of truth. So I would invite you, if you're in the mastermind group, or if you just like a mastermind prayer uh, steps, I'll be happy to email them to me, to you, or mail them to you. Um, but as you say the words, take time to contemplate them and to see if there's any triggers for you. Feel what you're feeling, and then ask questions of the divine. Get clarity. Seek spiritual understanding. Doubts don't mean abandoning the practice. Stay, sit, listen, trust your humanity. And then maybe we can do as Portia says and eventually just walk down a different street. At some point in our twisty, turny road we call life, with the gently rolling hills and the quiet, verdant valleys, and the seemingly impossibly high mountains to climb, our humanity can walk through everything life brings us. You're never alone, never ever alone. At some point we realize that each ending is a new beginning and so it goes. I don't know about you, but life sure gives me plenty of opportunities to practice non-resistance and practice and practice, and practice, and practice. So let's practice the mastermind prayer one more time as we close this morning.
And I think instead, no, I'll read the whole thing. So just, just take a moment. I commit. I now make the commitment to place my life completely under the direction of the Christ within. I dedicate myself to be of maximum service to God and my fellow humanity and to remain an open channel of God's will. I accept. I now accept that my personality is powerless to transform my life. It is the Christ within me that does the work. I believe in one presence and one power active in the universe. This power is perfect life, love, intelligence, wholeness, expressing through me now. With God, all things are possible. I forgive and I understand. I understand that erroneous self Defeating fears are the cause of my problems and unhappiness. I now forgive all others and make and myself for any real or imagined mistakes. I am willing to be changed at death. I ask believing in the awareness of the Christ presence. I ask believing that my heart's desire is now fulfilled. And then you state your heart's desire to the group. And then they affirm with you, our heart's desire is now made, your heart's desire is now made manifest. I give thanks. I give thanks as I joyfully and expectantly assume the very feelings now as I would, will have when my heart's desire is made manifest. And I let go. I let go and let God express through me in perfect ways I bless unity of Bay City, our mastermind prayer circles, our fall faith circles, and the abundance way, abundant ways we're serving our greater community and our world. Together, we celebrate life. And so it is. Amen. Namaste. Thank you. And now it's Barb. Yes. There you are. Where is she? There she is. To share of our financial gifts and ties for this ministry. If, if you're joining us today for the first time, let this be our gift to you. There are several different ways you can contribute. You can mail a check, use the donate button on our website, or set up an automatic payment through your fi own financial institute. Thank you for your continued support. We are grateful. Please join me in stating the affirmation for our offering. Together, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I am enough. I have enough. There is enough. Thank you. Two, one, two, three. <laughs> Never saw the sun shining 
so bright, never saw things going so right. Noticing the days hurrying by, when you're in love, and my how they fly, oh blue days, all of them gone, nothing but blue skies from now on. Blue days, all of them gone, nothing but blue skies from now on. John and Paula Petrakis. Yes. Yep. We thank you for joining us at Unity of Bay City today, whether it being on Zoom or in the sanctuary or in our parking lot. We are happy to share this time with you. Let's take a quick look at some upcoming events. Fall Faith is just around the corner. The starting date has changed. We'll be having our study circles on Thursday evenings at 6.30 p.m. beginning on October 15th. This year, we're looking at Living Originally by Robert Brummett. You can order the book at smileamazon.com or from your favorite bookseller. Call or email the office to sign up for study circles. Go ahead, Reverend Gail. Take it away. <laughs> and I said earlier, Robert Brummett's book is awesome. So um, I might try to get him to see if he can come to our opening. Um, uh, I haven't gotten hold of him yet, but we'll see. Maybe we get to meet Robert. Fall Faith Auction is in the planning stages. This year's event will take place on Zoom um, or Facebook. It will be different this year. Duh. <laughs> it's not different, right? <laughs> but it'll be good. Um, Tracy Bliss is um, coordinating this and looking for auction items, so contact the office or Tracy if you have items to donate to the auction. Ms. Barb? Reverend Gale, before, we, uh, before I do the next thing, um, for people on Facebook that are watching, can you give the website where they can go for the office number if they want to sign up for Fall Faith? It's unityofbaycity.org. Okay. You can hear me, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. Hear Barb. I don't know why. Can okay. you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, we are looking. So we're for looking forward to another drum circle on Friday, October the 16th. Woohoo! It's going to get colder though. <laughs> So dress warmly. We always have extra dr drums. Bring your own chairs or blankets or um, we'll have the bonfire going. Our very own Tony Dobert um, makes that bonfire good and warm for us. And um, the last two have been really greatly attended and, and a lot of fun. We're just getting better and better. And then of course we'll have another one um, on uh, Halloween. Well, we've already had one of our full moons this month, and we have our second full moon, the blue moon, on Halloween night. Awesome. So we are having a trunk or treat for our greater uh, Bay City community um, for the kids and the adults, but they're, it's going to be drive-through only. Um, they're not getting out of their cars. We're, um, oh, I should have brought you my pump, my candy holder. I bought a skeleton arm. <laughs> and the candy into the cars. Um, but we're looking for volunteers for Trunk or Treat. We, we have room for 18 vehicles and we have 12 already, I believe. Yes, I think, right? I don't see Tracy. Um, I know she's on there. She's, with, <laughs> she's doing background work on Facebook. Um, but if you'd like to decorate the back of your vehicle and socially distant, distantly, pass out candy uh, to trick-or-treaters that drive through, contact the office, or Tracy. Um, it's gonna be a lot of fun. My car happens to be bright orange, so it's gonna be the great pumpkin. We need donations for candy too, and we need two traffic directors, and any Halloween decorations. For the drumming then, later that night, it's just UBC, and you can bring friends. 
but we're not going to um, invite the general public to that. Um, we're going to have drumming, s'mores, a blue moon ceremony. Don't know what that's going to be like yet. And um, we'll have a little contest for like the best decorated mask, talking about your, your uh, safety masks and your costumes if you want to, not mandatory, just whatever makes you comfortable and laugh and have fun, right? That's what it's about. Prayer partners, we have a meeting today. If you can stay for a few minutes on Zoom and, and here, um, we'll do that. And then it's 11.30, I think, on the dot, and we're complete. So let's do our prayer for protection together. And I changed it last week, and I didn't tell anybody. So you can say it either way, but I, I, I changed it to I am light, I am love. See how that feels for you. If not, you can say I am the light of God. Either way, whatever moves you. So together, the light of God surrounds me. I am light. The love of God enfolds me. I am love. The power of God protects me. I am power. The presence of God watches over me. I am presence. Wherever I am, God is and all is well. And so it is. Amen. And thank you so much.